Okay, Instagram marketing strategy. Probably one of the most wide, widely requested things that, that we get. I'm just gonna say from the very start, this strategy works incredibly well. However, it is a long-term strategy. If you're just starting out, I don't recommend you implement this until later. It's gonna take you a while to really start seeing results, setting up the profiles. It also costs money to put together because you're gonna need phones and you're going to need to pay staff in order to put this together. However, if you have got capital to deploy, I really believe this is one of the best ways to do it. So getting started, proxies. You're going to need a proxy on every single phone that you use. And the reason for that is if you have hundreds of phones in the same location or using the same Wi-Fi, Instagram can detect it very easily and they will start blocking your accounts. You will get your Wi-Fi flagged, your IP address will be flagged and they will just start restricting accounts. VPN is okay. You can definitely use it. The difference between a VPN and a proxy is that a VPN is basically a shared server that potentially hundreds or thousands of other people are using at the same time and they're also routing their traffic through there. The only thing that I don't like about VPNs is you haven't got control over who else is using using a VPN. For example, if any of you have used a VPN in like your kind of personal usage and then you go on Google and it believes that you're a bot or that you're doing something malicious and you keep getting verification, it means that someone else is using the same server that you are and they're trying to do something maliciously such as scraping data or so on and Google is flagging that. So that's the only negative of a VPN is you don't know the quality of the IP address that you're using, but in, in theory, it performs the exact same functionality. If you want to know a good VPN, I suggest to use Molvad, M-U-L-V-A-D. I suggest it for both personal and professional usage. It's completely privacy focused, very good quality. However, in my personal case, I prefer to use, use proxies. So the service that I use for proxies is a service called Packet Stream. I've mentioned it multiple times before, but essentially it's a peer-to-peer -peer network. So someone can volunteer that you can use their IP address and they actually get paid to do it. So you are routing traffic through someone who has voluntarily given up their IP address to be used uh, as a proxy. So it's very cheap and it's pay as you go. So there's no monthly subscription. So there's nothing like that at all. I've used that for years and it's always worked very well for me. 4G proxy, do you need a 4G proxy? No, you don't. It's complete overkill. A 4G proxy is going to cost you between 50 to $100 per month, depending on where you get it from. For this type of service, it's not necessary at all. Yeah, you don't, don't need to worry about that. And proxy versus VPN, I've gone over that already. My personal recommendation is to use a proxy for the reason I mentioned, that it's not a shared address. It should be a private proxy, which means you're the person, you're the only person using that. In terms of adding proxies onto your mobile device, I suggest you to use a service called Potatso, P-O-T-A-T-S-O, and that allows you to add on proxies and it will automatically be connected and it will route your any requests that you make on that phone through that proxy server. It's a completely free application as well. Next up, setting up a good Instagram profile, bio and URL. So you want something that is short and snappy. You don't want to give someone's like life story away. I've seen some very funny bios being written before. Also on the Instagram profiles, so the other big mistake I see people making is being too promotional, making it feel like it's a sex worker and it just does not work. You want to go with a much more kind of subtle, more influencer style. This is a real girl, but we have a link and you can pay for her, for access to her private life essentially. And that is what OnlyFans really is. That is what separates it out from being a like from another pornography site or anything like that it is you are paying to get access to the girl's private life and that works best if the profile isn't too overly sexualized essentially if a guy feels that like she's just very easy it makes it not interesting at all they want to feel like this is a premium girl and the way that they can get access to her to talk to her to have attention from her is through the only fans if it's like a low quality looks like a low quality profile or that it's too it looks like an escort you're just not going to get the same level of conversions for the url we use linktree or all my links and the reason for that is we see a lower ban rate i have very rarely lost Instagram accounts, I've only lost a couple with all of the marketing that, that we've done. Whereas I often see reports of people losing their accounts all the time. Some people seem to be like frequently cycling through accounts. And one thing that I do notice in common is they're often pushing traffic directly over to the OnlyFans profile. 
I find that Linktree works very well and we don't have, we're not losing accounts because Linktree stands as a blockade between people getting directly onto the OnlyFans. And I actually believe that Instagram like it because it gives a little warning that this is sensitive content, which protects children from clicking on the link and so on, which will be a concern for, for Instagram. So that's why we use that. There's quite a few other alternatives as well, snip feed and things like that. There was also like some other premium options to offer slightly better tracking. You can definitely explore them. For us, like Linktree, all, all my links cover all of our bases. On Instagram Mother Slave, if we're doing a large volume of accounts, so we, we will actually use custom links with custom link tracking. So we actually built out our kind of own internal Linktree service. And the reason for that is rather than us needing to create like 500 different Linktree accounts to track what's going on the Instagram accounts, we just built our own website that automatically generates hundreds of different unique link trackers. And, and that also works very well for us. On the bio as well, just to add in like the kind of age and location works pretty well too like very kind of minimal and, and simplistic 19 london 19 los angeles whatever it is here's a couple of like examples that i put over these are absolutely fine as well just like an influencer style bio you can get rid of inquiries and snapchat perhaps youtube beauty vlogger makeup artist from wherever vegan it just gives her a little bit of personality and makes her come across like a real girl this girl's putting like her university fashion blogger putting some random little quotes on there and putting her location as well well, just putting some emojis on there and again just giving a bit of like personality to your girl she's a vegan she lives here and she's studying this putting her age in there as well particularly if you can position your model to be like a younger girl 18 or 19 uh, can definitely have a positive impact on your conversion rates as well content what type of content should you be posting on the Instagram profile? I really like clean kind of lifestyle photos, like an, in, like an insight into the girl's life. It really comes across as like a very casual Instagram profile. I think that so many guys just do this like completely wrong. They think by creating like very sexual Instagram accounts that it works well, and it really doesn't. It doesn't at all. Um, in some cases, some guys who are setting up Instagram profiles, they're actually giving away more on the Instagram than we even give away on, on the OnlyFans profile. So I would just recommend to tone it down, make it like a, just insight, make it very aesthetic page, showing off the girl's life a little bit, her traveling, her out for coffee, her restaurants and so on. Just influencer style photos, like fashionable pictures work really well. I'm out in Dubai at the moment and there's a lot of these Russian or Eastern European escorts, let's say, who actually do a fantastic job of this. Like they're taking their pictures, showing off a luxury lifestyle. They've got their designer handbags, they're out at all these fancy restaurants and so on, kind of pictures on a beach. If you are going to show off your model, they maybe have one or two lingerie pictures, but mostly it's going to be bikini stuff. They're sunbathing, they're at a beach club or whatever it is. But generally the standard of the Instagram page is actually very classy. And I believe that this comes across much, much better and leads to much better conversion rates as well. Of course, if the girls have a big ass, big boobs or whatever it is, whatever her particular assets are, your beautiful face, whatever it may be, definitely show that off. I'm not saying not to do that at all. If she's got like a great ass and you're putting pictures or putting up pictures of her in a tight dress, just, I'm just saying to maintain like a kind of classy way. If you become come across as like overly slutty or overly sexual in how you're promoting the uh, promoting the girls, it just harms the profile. No one really wants something that everyone can have. So if the profile comes across as being overly sexual or like a very kind of low quality girl, it's not really desirable. So yeah, just don't be over, overly sexual in the way that you promote the profile. But here's like an example of a bad account. Again, I don't mean to pick on anyone or kind of single anyone out, but this is just an example um, that I saw quite recently. The page is messy. But you just don't really get a good feeling when looking at it. It's a bit all over the place. Like we have reels being posted here on the page mixed up with like pictures of her just kind of bent over in her underwear in in a truck in in the woods somewhere mixed in with like reels again mixed in with like underwear content and her like this is the type of stuff that i would be saving for only fans Gen genuinely here she's got her boobs out covered by stickers again i'll be saving that for only fans it's just a, there's no aesthetic there's nothing appealing about this page at all nothing that makes me or i guess makes anyone want to uh, the reels i suggest hiding 
messy IG page, sorry, messy IG page, too much content. This literally to me comes across as a sex worker and it is it's not good. Too many low quality, like trashy content. Again, if you're posting lingerie content, it needs to be done in like a classy way. And this like really isn't, it should be in, just done it in like a, a classy way, maybe in the hotel or she's like on bed in like a seductive way. I really don't know what's going on here or this bent over picture as well. I don't think that's appealing to anyone. Often, and this is the other thing to mention, often when we have a model who applies to work with us who has set up their OnlyFans themselves or they've worked with an agency in the past, the first job that we actually do is desexualizing the the Instagram page and any of the other social media presence as well. We literally really tone it back down. Less is more, I think it's like a good way to, to say this doesn't come across as like a tease or anything appealing at all. It needs to be toned back a lot. In fact, I would delete all of this and probably start from scratch on this particular page, which is why it is in the bad account category. Good account done in a sexual way. So like I said, if your girl does have a good body or like good ass or good boobs, like whatever it is. And sorry, that was another thing to mention. The only thing that she has here under her story promotion under story archives is reviews of her OnlyFans page and a Black Friday deal promoting her OnlyFans page. It's too sexually focused, so too OnlyFans focused. And that's not what that's not what you want to do. So good accounts that are done in like a uh, semi revealing way. Like I said, I've got nothing against putting things out in like a teaser style content. Okay, even with underwear and like bikini content, this page has a good aesthetic to it. She's out here living her life. I don't know, I generally find this to be just a much better page. She's she's out at a swimming pool in a bikini. She's out on a jet ski in a bikini as well. Here she's in her underwear. So that would maybe be like two. To have one post in underwear out of these, what have we got here? 16 posts. Okay, that's acceptable. And there's another one up here as well. So I would probably tone this page down slightly as well, but it's definitely done in a much more classy way and it's got a better feel to it. The image quality is also much higher as well. This is a high quality Instagram profile. She obviously has a good bum as well. So I would I would show that off on the page and I do feel this is done quite well. If I was to manage this page though, maybe I would tone it down slightly, but all in all, not a bad page at all. Image quality is definitely much better. And then this one is kind of more the route that I would go down if I was going to go down like a sexual focused page. So we've got some pictures here of her in underwear and her in like very short shorts, underwear again, but mostly it's jeans, tight outfits, dresses up here. It's done in a more classy way, which kind of shows it off and shows off the page much better. And then on the story archives as well, there's nothing too promotional. You don't feel like you're being sold to. It's her showing off like her life and the things that she's up to basically. So that was like a much better example. And as I mentioned again, the escorts in Dubai or like these Eastern European girls, they really do quite a good job of this, of having like sex appeal, but whilst doing it in a very classy way. And I think it works very well. And then again, going on to like good accounts that aren't overly sexual at all. Just everyday kind of lifestyle pictures. Again, I really think this works very well. I would go with a mixture of these two and some of these ones here, but just by showing off a, a hot girl in her like day-to-day -day life, doing activities, traveling out at restaurants, drinking coffee, whatever she's doing, like, I can't zoom in on this, but yeah, just to zoom in, like they're all like good pictures. It's just her kind of living her life, a cute girl. Nothing sexual, again, just portrays like everyday life. And then in her link in the bio, you can show like her, that she offers her naughty side. Casual lifestyle travel pictures work really quite well. And again, cute and shy girls actually make more money as well. You can also charge much more money further down the line. If you're giving away everything on the, like the Twitter girls do, if you're giving away everything on the Instagram page for free, it doesn't make your content any, it doesn't give your content any value on OnlyFans. If they can see 90% of what you have to offer on the Instagram anyway, how are you ever going to charge like high prices? These would be like, personally, I, this is actually a really good page. This one is very good as well. And I would kind of balance it in with some of this kind of more like lifestyle stuff as well. These two are both OnlyFans creators and these ones aren't. So I would try to match it up somewhere in the middle of those two is my advice. In terms of setting up new accounts and warming up the accounts, the process that we do is we use real phones. As I've said before, we just find a lower ban rate. We will do three accounts per phone and we have them set up with, um, with proxies, we use aged accounts. We buy accounts from Black Hat World. And in terms of the actual warm up process, we upload a total of two posts per day bringing it up to a total of 24 posts per account. That is at a minimum. This acts as a form of social proof. People were asking me about social proof on what are the best numbers. 
it's not social proof even, sorry, it just makes it come across as like it's, a, it's an established account. The more posts you have, the better results you're going to see. We did a direct test on this and we saw a double, uh, we doubled our follow back rate when comparing accounts with 12 posts compared to 24 posts, which is why we suggest a minimum of 24 posts. Start with doing 10 followers per day, 10 actions per day, that is. Increase by 10 followers per day until you reach a maximum of 180 actions per day, and that is where we cap it off. If we receive a block, a temporary restriction, a ban, normally a temporary restriction, we will reset our following back down to zero. So we'll let the account sit there for a, a day or two, and then we will continue again re doing 10 actions per day, increasing by 10 per day. If we receive a warning, it's telling us to slow down, so we will reset our counter to zero. I'm following, this sounds like a funny one to answer, but this question was coming up in the group chat, so I'll go over it. Why do we want to unfollow? The reason we want to unfollow is because if you have an account with 1,000 or 2,000 followers, but it's following 7,000 people, it just comes across as a very low quality account. We want to maintain a healthy follower to following range, so that is why we handle unfollowing. Unfollowing does lead to higher blocks though, more than following. So how to actually unfollow? The way that we do it is we will wait three days until after we followed someone. If you go into Instagram, you can actually sort your following by most recent and choose to unfollow from there. And that is the actual process that we use. How to unfollow, you click the unfollow button. That is like the main way, but that can lead to blocks. If you are doing unfollowing, I suggest you to space it out as much as possible. Maybe doing five to 10 unfollows per hour and try to space it out throughout the whole day. The other strategy that you can use is actually blocking accounts. So if someone hasn't followed you back, you can go onto their profile and you can click the block button and then you can unblock them. That will stop you from following them, but they can potentially still come back and follow you in future. So that's our approach to doing that. In terms of how many followers do we do, we try to do about 80 to 120 per day and we actually alternate we'll do following one day and we will do unfollowing another day. Blocking does take more time, but it definitely does decrease the number of bans and restrictions that we get on our account. Okay, yeah, so social proof, minimum of, this isn't even social proof really, but minimum, sorry, actually it is. People were asking about how to maximize the click-through rate that you get on your Instagram page. So as a minimum, you want 24 posts, and this would also apply to if you're doing Tinder or any like dating apps or any other form of like paid traffic, this would be what I suggest you as a minimum. This would be like the bare minimum. 24 posts on the page, 2000 followers, ideally real followers, which will then mean that you have a healthy number of likes and comments on your posts as well. Maintain a healthy follow following ratio. So if you have 2000 followers, I would say you want to be following a maximum of about 500 people. That is a maximum. Remain active on the stories. So one of the key responsibilities we give to all of our models is to do you know, three story posts per day and on the slave accounts as well, we want to post stories on them as well to keep them active and also make sure that you have story archives uploaded on the accounts as well. It just makes the accounts appear to be genuine and much more like high quality. So this applies to both the main account of the model and also to any like slave accounts that you're setting up as well. Another question that gets asked quite often is, do we push traffic directly to the OnlyFans or over to the mother account? This depends on your primary goal. In my case, I push directly over to the OnlyFans profile. As a marketer, I don't want to have too many call to actions as it just means people can get lost. So we will push directly over to the OnlyFans page by putting a link in the bio. If you are also interested to simultaneously increase the followers of the main account, then you will push traffic directly over to the main account and it will also you will also generate conversions as well, but it will be slightly lower uh, because you are just adding steps into your funnel, which naturally increases the amount of drop off that you have. So yeah, pushing directly over to the OnlyFans link increases the number of immediate conversions that you will get. So more immediate sales, but you do lose the benefit of growing out the audience on the main profile and potential customers that could be acquired there in future. Just something to be aware of but the other benefit like is that you will also build up either way regardless of what strategy you choose here you end up building up a huge network on all of the slave accounts that, that you're managing 
So you always have that. It's just a case of do you also want to build up the audience on your mother account at the same time as well. So it really depends on the campaign that you're running. For example, we're running quite a few projects at the moment for crypto clients where we're growing out crypto audiences for them across large numbers of accounts on Instagram. And in that case, we're pushing directly over to the main account as well because they want to build up huge Instagram followings on their main profiles. How to avoid bans and blocks. Use a proxy or a VPN. When you receive an action block, drop the actions to zero. So when it says you're performing too much activity, let's say that you've been warming up the account for 11 days and you were doing 110 actions per day. If you get an action block, drop it to zero and start increasing by 10 actions per day. Don't perform activity too quickly. So what I mean by that is don't do follow. Duh, 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 duh. Instead, space it out, have a couple of second delay, click on the profiles, view the profiles, click back click follow it just really helps to reduce the number of blocks that you get unfollows as well either use the blocking strategy that i mentioned or make sure to space out your unfollows through the day you don't want to unfollow like 150 people all at once you want a delay when you're going through your following other than that yeah i hope that was insightful again three accounts per device the reason that we do that is because it means if one account has an issue, it often doesn't get leaked through onto the other accounts. Whereas before we tried managing like five accounts per device. And if one account got a restriction, it would actually lead to a restriction across all of the accounts. So that is the reason that we implement that. Any other questions or anything you feel I've missed out, anything that wasn't clear, I will be available in the Discord group for further discussion.